Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Uh, so day 10 is going to take us around the 17th of January and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have extended GFS and ECM ensembles maybe to around uh, a couple of weeks. We're going to have a look at the CFSV2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And uh, of course, that is going to take us uh, into the early part of February. So I shall get on with that for you very shortly. We're going to begin by bringing up date of everything stratosphere wise i'll get on with that for you very shortly just to say that coming up uh later on today we're going to have uh, a bit of a snow watch so there is a band of snow coming southwards across the country um tonight uh we've got a band of snow uh inching in from the north and um i think it's quite light at the moment that might pep up as we get through the night and into tomorrow it might give a covering to some areas i think there's enough here to to warrant doing snow watch so that's going to be coming up for you this evening and then um the first video uh though uh, that we released today was the european outlook so uh, that's back after its christmas and and New Year break. Have a look at the European outlook if you would uh, like to do that. Okay, then. So let's begin with our 10 to 14 day. We're going to start off at, with uh, development strategy wise. So it's our temperatures are currently looking at 10 HPA over North Park. This is the JMA. Uh, of course, some traffic warming did occur earlier this week. We have dropped the temperature a little bit from where it was a couple of days ago. We've gone down from around minus 20 to around uh, minus 30 degrees. Still very substantially above average at this time of year. We should be somewhere uh, around sort of minus 60 or minus 62 or minus 63 degrees. So <laughs> it's very significantly warmer than average. But we can't maintain that very high temperature all that long. So uh, it's expected that the temperature will begin to drop uh, after a while. Going low down to 30 HPA. Uh, again, we can see that uh, we lived in temperature not quite as high there. But it went up close to minus 40. It's now dropped down ever so slightly. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, the significant development is reverse zonal winds, of course, at 10 HPA. We're still waiting for reverse zonal winds at 30 HPA, uh, I think. Um, but, but very significant development. So now it's just a waiting game to see what, if any, tropospheric response we get to this stratospheric warming and, uh, and reversal of zonal winds. We've probably got to wait around two to four weeks uh, before we see what, if any, tropospheric response we get. Looking at temperatures at 10 HPA, this is how they are currently looking. So um, we've got these uh, green colours, of course, that have infiltrated into uh, the Arctic and the North Pole at 10 HPA. The blue colours, cold temperatures at 10 HPA, have been pushed out into North Atlantic and Northern Europe. Running through... We can see that those blue colours uh, continue in the stratosphere at 10 HPA. Another sort of secondary warning, a little bit minor this one, but another secondary warning begins to occur uh, over towards Siberia. As we go out beyond that into the second half of January, this is how things start. So, so that war secondary warming does intensify uh, over Siberia around uh, day 10. We start to lift temperature up into those red colours, which is getting to uh, some traffic warming levels uh, once again. Uh, it just remains quite warm over Siberia in the stratosphere right way through to the end of GFS 6 z uh, run. So we may get a second sudden stratospheric warming. It's possible that, that we will. I have to wait and see, but I certainly wouldn't be ruling it out that we might get a second sudden stratospheric warming at some point through January or, or later on in the winter. CT is uh, still cold, so uh, we're standing at 1.7 at the moment. That is 1.8 degrees below average. That's provisional to the 6th of uh, January. So, so a really cold opening week to uh, January, definitely. Uh, these are the GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Liverpool today. So the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Liverpool. We're starting off colder than average at the moment. In fact, it's going to get a little bit colder over the next 24 to 48 hours, going quite close to 10, uh, minus 10 at 850 HPA. Through the weekend into next week, the temperature is going to start to pick up. So as we move through into the middle part of January, we've been talking about this in videos for a, a lot, for, for quite a while now. It is going to turn milder. Milder weather is on the way for next week. If you don't like cold weather, then, then next week will be better for you as it will start to turn uh, milder for, for a few days. But beyond that, we get a lot of scatter. So into the second half of January, which is going to be this period just here, we have then got a lot of scatter. We've got these on some members down here that, that are cold, very cold, some of them. In fact, one is like a beastly, you see that one there, the gold rum. 
is going down to minus 15 at 850 HPA. So that's that's going really cold. Um, a lot of scatter events. So, so these are all cold on some members. These are milder on some members. So the second half of January is up for grabs. And it's not impossible that it could turn very cold into the second half of January. You'll have to wait and see precipitation-wise. A uh, reasonable amount of dry-ish weather coming up over the next few days while it's cold. Um, this area of precipitation just here. Uh, is like the weather front that I said at, at the start of the video, I mentioned at the start of the video, could bring some snow. So, uh, yes, we may have a little bit of snow coming southwards tonight. More about that than snow watch. And it goes drier after that through the weekend. But next week does look more on south. So as it turns milder, uh, it starts to turn more on south as well. There will be some rain around the course of next week and then all of this period just here it does look quite unsettled of course that's when we've got all of the scatter so i think we leave that period uh alone for now temperature anomalies from the 17th to 15th of january are going to be colder than average so yes a cold uh week coming up from the 17th to 15th of january though the anomaly isn't as cold as it has been in pre previous days probably telling us that this cold spell is beginning to run out of steam uh, for, for the UK and Ireland, anyway. Precipitation anomalies from the 7th to, to, to 15th of January are going to be dry over average. So still cold and dry, really, summing it all up. This is the latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net showing that winds uh, remain from the north. So northerly winds continue, and so, of course, it continues to be uh, really quite cold. But changes are on the way. This is how the UK Met is looking for Sunday with high pressure ridge again over the country, bringing a lot of dry but uh, cold weather away from Scotland anyway, where it's starting to turn a bit milder. Through the early part of next week, it goes milder on Monday as the wind turns into the west. But then on Tuesday, we actually start, we actually start to push a cold front southwards that brings uh, bad rain and reintroduces like a colder northerly wind again. And then the high pressure ridge is back in for Wednesday. That's probably going to be quite cold under that ridge, bringing frost and fog. But after that, I think we start to introduce like a southwesterly. Uh, the second half of next week probably does turn. Uh, and genuine, genuinely quite a lot milder. Uh, as far as we go over the UK map, this is how the GFS looks. So this is GFS for Sunday. Again, ridge of high pressure will bring dry, cold, probably frosty and foggy weather to England and Wales, going a little bit milder across Scotland with uh, westerlies. Into the early part of next week, again, we bring up the air from the west, bringing in the air from the west and southwest to milder through the early and uh, middle part of next week with the GFS 6Z. Going very mild by this time next week. This is Thursday, 14th January. Look at that long back southwesterly. Um, bring the air up from the Azores. That probably lift temperatures widely into double digits. I would have thought, what a change on this week. Uh, notice very deep cold uh, developing over much of Scandinavia and northeastern Europe and western Russia, though. Really deep cold pool over there. Uh, so if we could get another Scandinavian high going, then the cold pool is, is then available to turn the wind into the east. That would be like what this ensemble member is doing. I would have thought just here, this ensemble member, Gold Run, just there, um, I would have thought that is tapping into that very deep cold pool sitting just to our northeast up there. As it is, though, with the GFS uh, 6Z running up towards day 10, we keep it pretty mild, really, with winds in from the west or from the southwest. But it's not long for the jet stream starts moving southwards. So uh, this is Thursday, 19th of January. We are into like, the extended range now, a reliable time frame. 300 hours away, but we're starting to pull down colder winds from the north again. So it's not all that long before we start to go colder. Then this next low comes in. Of course, that's coming into cold air, so uh, could be all sorts of funny games with that. As that one clears away again, we get another pull uh, of cold air from uh, the north once again. And then another low coming into that cold air. So it does suggest that like the third week of January possibly turns colder and more wintry maybe after, uh, after a milder second week, something like that. Uh, GEM looks like this. Uh, so, um, Sunday, England and Wales, mainly dry, quite gone frosty, a little bit milder across Scotland and Northern Ireland. Most places looking milder early next week. Then back into a little bit of a colder snap around Tuesday. Uh, a ridge building through the country for Wednesday. It is trying to go mild. Notice heights rise around Spain. We've got low pressure around Iceland and Green. And we are trying to pull in uh, a much milder west southwesterly. So, so it's trying to go milder, but this ridge it contains quite cold air. And that is sort of uh, holding up, uh, you know, it's holding up that push of uh, milder air from off the Atlantic Ocean. 
Uh, we go through to second half next week, and we do start to pull in some Marda air bed. Although the cold area we're blocking to our north northeast is not all that far away, really. And as we head towards day 10, uh, we do actually get high pressure building over Scandinavia and trying to turn the wind back into the east once again with the GM. Look at the extent of the cold pool that is sitting just to our east. It wouldn't take much at all to tap into that cold pool and start to push it. Uh, you know, push it into western parts of Europe. So, so yes, we've got to watch this, I think. We've got to watch this space with this deep cold pool sitting just to our east. The ECM looks like that. Again, ridge of high pressure is through the country, or through England and Wales, on certainly being mostly dry, frosty weather. It's milder than Scotland and Northern Ireland. Early next week, it goes milder, with winds in from a west or southwesterly direction and then we move on in second half of next week generally looking milder through most parts of the country uh day 10 again deep cold pool sitting to our north northeast a little bit of a ridge extending up from the southwest just a little bit of a ridge extending up from the southwest but if we look at the uh, upper air temperatures again we see the extent of that cold pool sitting just to our north northeast so if this high pressure will start pushing up towards Scandinavia, you can see we've got we've still got the siberian high up here uh, so we're still like the Siberian high lurking up there. If this ridge was to start pushing into that direction, or the ridge of Siberian high was to start pushing in that direction, I suppose, um, you know, uh, and they um, and they was to set up a blocking area of high pressure somewhere around there, then of course with a deep cold pool, uh, we are in business to have a beach from the east. There is reports in the paper saying no about the chance of a beast from the east. I would say it's no more than probably around 5-10%, but the possibility is there because of a deep cold pool that is to our northeast, and also, you know, the, the way this winter has so far has been prone towards blocking. I won't completely rule it out that we might get a beast easily um, in, in the next week or two. But but it's a low probability, as we see from the GFS ensembles at the moment, very few... Uh, on some members of GFS are going for that. But but don't completely, entirely discount the possibility. Watch this space. Uh, right, this is how the uh, ECMWF uh, run is looking in terms of the precipitation type forecast from Tometio.com. So here comes that snow um, tonight and into tomorrow. Quite heavy snow being forecast there through northern England into Wales and possibly coming down into parts of the Midlands uh, as well. So it's a central way of the country, but tonight and uh, tomorrow morning we get a little bit of a snow event. More about that snow watch uh, later. That snow then sort of fizzles out. It never makes it into the south. So it fizzles out over Wales and the, and the West Midlands um, later tomorrow. By Saturday, we're under high pressure, and mainly dry but cold, and frost across England and Wales, turning a bit milder across Scotland. And then next week is milder, of course. So uh, away from Scotland, anyway, where, where there could still be some snow, we're, we're basically channeling uh, rain then. I think, through uh, through next week and running up towards day 10. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. This gets us to the 17th of January. 23 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control and the operational run, still looking pretty cold, really, with high pressure sort of centred, anyway, to the north, reaching down into the North Atlantic lower pressure through there. So, although it is trying to get a bit mud, we are trying to bring up the wind from the southwest. Really, we're still more or less uh, in quite cold conditions. Uh, 18 just here have high pressure through the country and to the north as well, a fair amount of dry weather with that. And then 10 have a high pressure sitting in the Norwegian Sea and winds are going into uh, the east, of course, with those 10. So that's probably the coldest option. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. And there's lots of them uh, telling us, uh, you know, it's an uncertain period as we move to the third week of January. This gets to the 22nd of Jan. So we have uh, 10 members of ECL ensembles with high pressure uh, to the west of Greenland. Lower pressure is coming in off the Atlantic. That's going to be milder and wetter uh, with that option. We have 10 with high pressure centred around Greenland to the north of Scotland. Low pressure out here. And we'll be bringing in winds from like an easterly type direction. So that's probably going to be quite cold. Uh, another 10 just here with high pressure in mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic mid ridge going to Greenland. Low pressure is sitting to our east. And winds will be coming in 
from the north. Nine with high pressure again around Greenland, low pressure to our east. Winds again probably going to be northerly, quite cold. Eight again with high pressure to the northwest, low pressure to southeast. You think that's going to be basically quite cold. And then four with high pressure bridging through the country and going northward. So most of the options still look like they could be quite cold to me. Um, you know, e even in two weeks' time, which gets us to the 22nd of January. Right, CFSV2 next. These are 500 millibar heights breaking down into wheat beers. The first wheat beer will take us from the 7th to the 13th of January. Uh, the coming week is uh, cold, of course, with high pressure away to the north and northwest, low pressure to the south. Winds are in from an east or northerly direction, so yes, it remains cold for the time being. Uh, week 2 is going to be the 14th to the 20th of January with high pressure reaching through the west of Europe and going northwards. A lot of dry weather with that. Probably quite cold still even then, but it's sort of anticyclonic type cold weather. The real cold is, of course, in the east of the northeast Europe with that trough of low pressure that's going to bring in some very cold air to northern and eastern parts of Europe. But under this ridge, uh, especially as it's been cold anyway, it's probably quite, quite uh, frosty. Uh, and that sort of weather. Uh, then we go through to uh, week four, week three, I should say. It can take us from 21st to 27th of January. High pressure will begin to slip south. We're still very cold in the northeast of Europe with that trough. Um, just perhaps starting to go a little bit more Atlantic based, so a little bit milder then by trying to get through to week three. And then week four, uh, we're back into milder weather. This is the 28th of January to the 3rd of February. Low pressure in off the Atlantic. Winds are coming in from the west. That's obviously much more unsettled. It's a lot wetter, um, but it is also milder as well. Heights rising across southern parts of Europe. That's returning us to westerlies. Lastly, I think before we just finish with this, just for, you know, to note, uh, but it is a very noteworthy cold day uh, across many parts of the country today. This is how uh, the observations are looking from XC weather as of uh, nine minutes past two this afternoon. Um, so there we go, uh, minus three degrees uh, at Wellersbourne Airfield, minus three maximum temperature, no doubt in freezing fog. Much of central England is around freezing, so we've got Nottingham at minus one, we've got Cranfield at minus one, we've got Lynham at minus two, even down into the south, we've got Bournemouth at minus one, we've got Southampton at freezing. Uh, you know, these are noteworthy cold Noteworthy cold temperatures. Leek is at minus one as well. Uh, Shobdon is at plus two. It's a little bit minor out, out there and a little bit minor in Norwich. I expect that's outside of the fog. It's probably where I've got the fog, I would have thought, through this central way of the country. Also around freezing further north. Uh, Carlisle at freezing. Uh, Estelle Muir at minus one. I suspect it's probably snowing uh, there across the northern parts of England. So that's why the temperature is around freezing there. Tell bridge is at freezing as well. A boy is at freezing. So if you've got sunshine, probably it's around two or three degrees. Still really cold. Um, but but if you've got freezing fog and or snow, the temperature is probably hovering uh, around freezing. We're having an ice day here in North France. We've been in uh, freezing fog all day and the frost has been, you know, uh, really, really quite uh, severe all day. So, so yeah, this is the coldest day we've had for several years, I think, here in central England. Uh, coldest day probably Probably since the beast from the east back in March, um, you know, uh, early March 2018. So it is noteworthy how cold it is across the country today. Right, so if you enjoy this video, please can you click like, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Don't get to your friends about gas weather. Well, everybody who subscribes uh, brings a friend. We'll get to our target of 10k subscribers so much quicker. Drop a comment and let us know what you thought about this video. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. If you are subbed to our channel, you're going to be able to see future weather content. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We're going to be back later on with Snow Watch. So uh, we'll go through some model data and see what possibilities are for snow uh, tonight and tomorrow uh, across the country. Uh, but for this one, don't forget to check out European Outlook as well, by the way. For this one, though, uh, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.